Hello and welcome to Call of Discovery, the podcast where we celebrate Keyforge, its community, and the excitement of Discovery. I'm Zach Armstrong, and it's just me today because I'm hopping on here to go over something from the Game Found campaign, the Keyforge Game Found campaign at the time of recording. Still live, still ticking upward, very exciting. Uh, and I wanted to go over one of the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Question entries, that was posted recently in response to a number of commenters. Now, usually here at Call of Discovery, we try to do things that are a little more, a little more, uh, at least seasonal, um, not quite as timely or, or, or newsworthy. This one is is a bit on the news end, simply because this. FAQ, this frequently asked question, this answer was posted during the campaign, uh, posted during the campaign in response to a number of commenters. However, I'm bringing it up here because I think it's one of our clearest windows into the mindset that Ghost Galaxy has going forward for Keyforge. And I think that's very important. So I want to talk about my thoughts through it. I think it's good. I think it needs some qualifiers here, at least from a, a fan perspective. And so I hope to to walk through this with you. You may already agree with me. You may have been, uh, you may have read this FAQ, and uh, perhaps it was discouraging to you. I could, I could honestly, that's that you're probably the main person I'm speaking to today. Uh, or you may not know the FAQ existed, and you want to hear a bit about it. <clears throat> so I'm going to read uh, the first uh, the first part of the FAQ answer, then the second part, do a little bit of talking about both. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, oh, I will be editing this a bit less than usual, so please excuse any just real-life background noise in the back uh, or any casual retakes I do as we go here. So uh, I will post... uh, I will post the text of uh, this FAQ either um, in in the, the description of this episode uh, or somewhere else linked in the description of this episode, just so it's easy to get to. I'm not sure there's a way to directly link on the GameFound page. So... Uh, the, the FAQ, so the question, uh, a frequently asked question qualified as an FAQ, frequently asked, that was posed that Game Galaxy distilled and posted. The question is, after the Keyforge Winds of Exchange campaign, will Keyforge be a successful game? I mean, I think we all desperately want the answer to this question, don't we? So their answer is thus. A few commenters have requested us to provide evidence that we will make Keyforge successful after the conclusion of this campaign, or to provide disclosure of our plans to do so. We're happy to be clear. Ghost Galaxy A cannot guarantee that our Keyforge relaunch will be successful beyond this campaign. B cannot guarantee that Keyforge will get wide retail support. C cannot guarantee that our Keyforge organized play program will be successful. And D C, well, I guess they mean, and D cannot guarantee that we can continue publishing and supporting Keyforge in the future in any given territory or language. While we hope for all these things to be true, and while Ghost Galaxy will try to make them so, we cannot know or guarantee as such. That's the end of section one, so we're going to talk about that for just a minute. This is a list of things they can't guarantee. So at first reading, this could be uh frustrating it's it's very this is this is an answer coming from several people uh taking on a huge business risk trying to catch a falling knife as christian peterson likes to say uh uh, as in trying to get keyforge uh going back again catching a falling knife and so they're trying to ground themselves in realism here i think success is very possible however they're taking on a lot of risk. They've already taken on a lot of risk by purchasing Keyforge and going forward with it. Of course, the game found has transferred some risk to uh, the consumers, of course, perhaps not an undue amount. And you only engage with the game found if you you know, acknowledge and are willing to take on that risk. So they say they can't guarantee it'll be successful beyond the campaign, can't guarantee it'll get wide retail support, can't guarantee the organized play program will be successful, and can't guarantee that they'll continue publishing and supporting Keyforge in any given territory or language. So this is fair, and I'm glad they're saying this. I think the biggest risk is people saying, well, do they care or nothing? They're not going to try hard? Because here's the thing. That's not what they're saying. They're not saying they don't care. They're not saying they're not going to try hard. Going line by line, one, we cannot guarantee that our Keyforge relaunch will be successful beyond this campaign. They can't. It's a risk. Any product 
you whether it's a new kind of spaghetti, uh, a new <laughs> smart watch, heck, even the next. I mean, maybe you could guarantee the next iPhone will be successful, but within certain bounds, maybe it would be considered a failure, right? You can't guarantee that anything is going to be successful. You 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 work hard and you work smart and you look at the market and you try and make a good product and you try to get good marketing and you hope all that is going to work out. And uh, one would hope that in a good economy, uh, an innovator, a good marketer, good production will be rewarded with commercial success. However, they know that it's not guaranteed. They know that it's not guaranteed. They know that people are getting their hopes up. And I do think they're striving to fulfill a lot of those hopes that people like me, like you, have. However, they can't guarantee the Key Forge relaunch is going to be successful beyond that campaign. They're going to work hard for it, but they can't guarantee that. They can't promise you 100% that it will happen no matter what. B, we cannot guarantee that Keyforge will get wide retail support. Man, that's one of the biggest risks of this campaign. So... Forget all of FFG's communications issues. Forget all of Ghost Galaxy so far good communications practices. Keyforge was sold to retailers. A bunch of them carried it. They ran out and weren't able to keep product in stock at all, so they had angry people. There was a number of months, really just months, maybe a year, where retailers had Keyforge in stock and were selling it at the rate they wanted to and able to get it back. And then... The pandemic hit. Organized play shuts down. Worlds is canceled. Sets are delayed. Logistical issues affect Keyforge. That is an uh, any any store any FLGS that survives all of that now has a whole bunch of extra Keyforge lying around. Even Asma Day, the parent company of FFG, had so much Keyforge lying around that once they had the paperwork signed on Keyforge, they sold decks for a dollar a deck on their website. We even, I have read reports from various people online that Asma Day, uh, you know, filled, filled orders for Keyforge for, you know, for friendly local game stores. And then the next day, this $1 sale was up. Keyforge, just economically, doesn't matter who has said what, how good or bad FFG was at communication, economically, Keyforge failed friendly local game stores. It was a liability. It was a risk that, after a point, didn't work out. Everybody's discounting it because it's expensive to just keep it on your shelves. I love this game, obviously. This is episode 104. I guessed it on 13 and 14. I became a full host on 23. I think. You can double check me. It's roughly correct. Anyways, but that that's the situation with retailers. To win trust back, to get retailers back in, saying yes to Keyforge, it's get, people are going to need to be buying it. People are going to be wanting to come out to organize play. It's going to need to be a commercial success again. Perhaps not to the degree it was before, but it's going to need to move is going to need people interested. And that's going to not going to be all on you, dear listener. Yes, go and buy all the Keyforge you want to buy that fits in your budget. Uh, but it's not all on you. This is looking all across the United States and the world, especially where Keyforge gets localizations. And it's looking at how much it actually sells. A lot of that is Ghost Galaxy's part, of course, the, you know, and but that's just the market. How many fans actually come out and buy these things? So yes, buy plenty of Keyforge decks. But it's not just on you. It's not just on me. It's it's looking at the whole the aggregate here. Now, of course, do our actions matter? Of course they do. I wouldn't I wouldn't have a Keyforge podcast if I didn't think my actions didn't matter. I wouldn't be speaking to you if I didn't think what you thought didn't matter. On to point C. Ghost Galaxy cannot guarantee that our Keyforge organized plague or organized plague program will be successful. So just like the previous one with it, the that they can't guarantee Keyforge will get wide retail support because. Retailers have been burned, and Asthma Day uh, views friendly local game stores as competition. Um, they can't guarantee the organized play group member will be successful. One, we don't even have details on this. They may give us details before the end of the campaign. It may be after. I've seen some good arguments for wanting to hear, uh, wanting to hear about what the organized play plans are before hitting purchase on this game fan. And I honestly think that's a completely legitimate, legitimate uh, concern and a legitimate ask. I'll still be purchasing. Of course, I would love to hear organized play program plans before the game found is over. Uh, credit to Dr. Sheep over in Archon's Corner for really bringing that point to my attention. And I think it's an incredibly, an incredibly fair one. But just like with retailers, they can't guarantee the OP program is going to be successful. I'm sure they're going to try to innovate. They're going to try some cool stuff. But if it, if it flops, uh, it flops. 
it's it's less about their effort and more about the fact that they can't promise you. They can't look you in the eyes, listener, and promise you this is going to go great because they're not sure. Are they going to work hard? Are they going to work smart? Is this a team? Yes. Is this a team full of, of history and industry professionals looking to innovate in the industry and bring back this beloved card game that be, especially because of its unique nature, uh, it just means so much to so many people. Yes. They're going to try their absolute hardest and guess what? Their company's pretty much on the line. I mean, perhaps they could survive Keyforge totally flopping. I don't know what that would look like. Hopefully they've got, you know, payroll accounts locked in a vault where they can't touch it no matter how b- bad things go. But their company is depending on Keyforge right now. If Keyforge goes well, guess what? They can launch another unique deck game or another algorithmically assisted game that'll that'll be in the same vein it'll be awesome they could do even more they could add more things to keyforge they could do more events they could expand the scope they are betting on keyforge more than anyone investing in the winds of exchange game found campaign they are betting their company and these years of their professional lives i know that sounds a bit like i'm i'm shilling for them them they're they're uh, shilling for them there and hey maybe i am a little bit because i love this game so much and they've been winning my trust now of course they don't get a free pass they don't get a free pass but this is their only game this is their only publicly advertised game it's five people they've got a game found they're trying to launch it i i can't i can't think <laughs> i would be shocked if they were really spending significant time working on anything else right now they're betting on this can they guarantee organized play will pop off no are they going to innovate and give us the best The best shot they have, I believe so. From my communication with Michael Hurley, from my communication with Christian T. Peterson, limited as both have been, I believe they're going to give us our best shot. Now, do we give feedback when they launch things and we say, well, we don't really like it that way? Yes, give that feedback. Give it in a considered, measured way in context. There's things they know that you don't. However, you're a fan, you're the audience. So they want to hear that voice. They've been clear about that. So reach out to them, send send them an email through the contact form on the website. Uh, let them know your thoughts, uh, whether it's constructive feedback on something that could be better or whether you just really appreciate something that they've been doing. So they... They want that. They want to be the best they can be. I'm confident in that. Lastly, Ghost Galaxy cannot guarantee that we continue publishing and supporting Keyforge in the future at any given in any given territory or language. Uh, I mean, I think they're simply admitting that all things <laughs> come to an end at some point, unless you're Magic the Gathering or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Uh, so they, they are saying... They can't guarantee support will be forever. Again, they're just simply saying we cannot promise you that we're going to support this game forever in perpetuity. And honestly, with the vast number of games that have promised those big things, those expandable games, those card games, and then just fallen off, like I'm glad they're being upfront here. I think the risk they're running with publishing language like this is they're being realistic, which I like. They're being honest and open, which I think is the right call. Of course, the risk is saying, oh, well, that's just depressing, I guess. I can't really bet on it. Well, (laughs) we couldn't bet on it fully in the past either, but maybe we just didn't think about that as much. And besides, we need to remember to own our play experiences. Not that, not that Ghost Galaxy is off the hook for providing something amazing. They want to do that. And I want to enjoy what they give us. But owning your play experience means knowing that Keyforge is just one part of your life. Maybe it's awfully special to you like it is to me. Uh, and it's all about how you say, okay, how how can this be a good part of my life? All these decks I have, how can I enjoy them? Who can I get into this game? What people, what friends can I play with on TCO uh, to really get enjoyment out of this game? And I know many of you are, are without local scenes, without a friend to play with locally. Uh, and that stinks. I feel that. It took a while for me to find people locally uh, here in Georgia, here in Georgia, USA. So I feel that. I hope some people come your way. I hope you find... Uh, uh, another card game friend, uh, a card game friend that you can play Keyforge with, uh, even if it's just through your collection. Sass climb your collection. Do it. It's fun. So that's the first section. Uh, now they have numbers one through 10. They're summarizing their commitments. So they went through the things they can't guarantee. Now they're going to go through the things that they are, uh, the facts and commitments that they are sticking with. So I'm going to read them all, then we'll go through them. Ghost Galaxy, one, acquired Keyforge, a game no longer being produced but had a large fan base at one point. 
2. Ghost Galaxy is committed to rebuilding the software needed to produce Keyforge, a non-trivial endeavor. 3. Ghost Galaxy engaged in both of the above without any practical data as to existing demand in the market, just a bet in the viability of the game. There's the catching a falling knife Christian Peterson has talked about. 4. Ghost Galaxy is running this campaign for the thousands of players that love the game and who want more Keyforge. 5. Ghost Galaxy is committed to providing the Keyforge Winds of Exchange products described in the campaign, subject to the disclosed risks, and I checked that section, simply uh, your standard, you know, logistics supply, that sort of thing. I'd encourage you to check out that disclaimer uh, uh, if you haven't already on the GameFound site towards the bottom. 6. Ghost Galaxy intends to support the existing fan base in the near future with organized play and more Keyforge releases for as long as it makes financial sense, perhaps using crowdfunding in the future, perhaps not. We'll touch on that one in a bit. There's a lot in that one. 7. Ghost Galaxy intends to make Keyforge Winge of Exchange products commercially available to tabletop hobby retailers in the future. Excellent. 8. Ghost Galaxy will provide more information on organized play and future releases in the future, but not necessarily during this campaign. Okay. 9. Ghost Galaxy is focused squarely on the existing player base and community, which has proven more than substantial enough for a successful game. Listener, that's you. 10. Ghost Galaxy hopes that our future plans and releases are sufficiently fun and exciting enough for more retailers and new players to join in on the action. However, this is not among our first considerations. Serving the existing community and publishing great products are... And in summary, they have at the bottom, except as provided above, Ghost Galaxy provides no other promise or guarantee, explicitly or implicitly, explicitly or implicitly, <laughs> that's what you get when I'm not editing, editing these things real tightly, uh, in regards to the campaign or in regards to Keyforge in general. If you require more assurances, disclosures, or guarantees than this, then we cannot recommend that you back this campaign. Again, they're being very real here. And I love this list of 10 things because most of them are facts and then commitments where they said we are committed to doing this. We're committed to trying this. They're not going to guarantee you of that future all of us, including Ghost Galaxy, want, but they're telling you what they're committing to. So number one, so the uh, this is the a fact you know between facts and commitments here in this list. Ghost Galaxy acquired Keyforge, a game no longer being produced but had a large fan base at one point. That's just the basic facts about Keyforge. They, they have bought this game. Had a large fan base, so maybe there's a market there, but it was no longer produced. It's been on hiatus. That's difficult. Number two, they're committed to rebuilding the software needed to produce Keyforge a non-trivial endeavor. We know they were working on their own algorithmic card game software when Asmodee approached them to purchase Keyforge. So they had some of the work started. Uh, I don't know how far they are along. Um, I believe this work is very doable. However, it's uh, it's complicated. It's complicated. Three. Uh, Ghost Galaxy engaged in both of the above without any practical data as to existing demand in the market, just a bet in the viability of the game. This is a huge risk. Like I said before, this is risking their company and years of their professional lives on this project. Christian T. Peterson's image of catching a falling knife, I think, is really summarized here in that they they didn't look at data beyond how the game sold when it was at an FFG. They didn't do any market research. They just said, yes, we're going to make a bet on Keyforge. And oh man, that what a bet, what a bet it is. So yes, let's give them feedback if there's things they do that we don't like. Let's also keep in mind <laughs> how hard they're working and how much everybody working at this company is betting, just working on this company that has Keyforge round two uh, in as their, their only title so far. Number four, Ghost Galaxy is running this campaign for the thousands of players that love the game and who want more Keyforge. They know we exist. That's who they're doing this for. Their first steps were to say, hey, who still loves Keyforge? Who still wants more? We're going to serve you first and foremost right now. We're going to worry about retailers and new players later. Right now, all you who stuck around, all of you who your ears perk up, you say, hey, I haven't played Keyforge in a while. Oh, look, they're picking it up. That's cool. That's who Ghost Galaxy wants to serve first. I think that's smart. As far as money goes, we're also the ones whose wallets are going to open the most easily. Number five, 
Ghost Galaxy is committed to providing the Keyforge Winter of Exchange products and other items described in this campaign subject to the, the disclosed risks. Yep, so they're just saying we want to complete the game found, we want to make sure it's good, we want to get those decks out there, and all those other goodies. Again, check out the disclosed risks, risks section at the bottom of the game found page. There's a link to it in the left sidebar there. Uh, just good to familiarize yourself with it because those are the risks you're saying yes to when you uh, when you pledge. Not that you'd lose your money. I mean, sometimes Kickstarters run or, uh, you know, crowdfunding runs away the money. I don't think they will. But uh, <laughs> again, no guarantees, right? Number six. Ghost Galaxy intends to support the existing fan base in the near future with organized play and more Keyforge releases for as long as it makes financial sense, perhaps using crowdfunding in the future, perhaps not. They've said they don't want to use crowdfunding in the future. I think this is them couching that to say, uh, hey, if it's still high risk to just make more Keyforge sets, sending them to retail, um, we might have to do crowdfunding in the future if that's the way it makes financial sense for Keyforge to happen. Now, the words here... The phrase, right, uh, in number six, oh, excuse me, um, uh, in number six here, yes, number six, uh, with more Keyforge releases as long as it makes financial sense, they need to make money. Whatever you do for your job, if you have one, right, this is their job. This is how they put food on the table. If they've got kids, this is how they, you know, feed them, pay for hobbies, maybe save for college if the kids are interested in that. This is Keyforge, Ghost Galaxy, Strange Stars is how these people are making a living, are making a living. So they need Keyforge to make financial sense if they're going to continue forward with it. That makes sense to me. I hope it continues to make financial sense for them because I love this dang game. Number seven, Ghost Galaxy intends to make Keyforge Winge of Exchange products commercially available to tabletop hop pay tabletop hobby retailers in the future it is late here i'm recording this very late much later than usual so that's their commitment number seven to sending to retail that's great that's gonna build a little bit of trust in any retailers who are paying attention uh before this actually hits the shelves right Number eight, Ghost Galaxy will provide more information on organized play and future releases in the future, but not necessarily during this campaign. Okay, would love to see organized play plans during this campaign. However, I understand the very small amount of time they've had to plan uh, all this kind of thing. Plan, maybe test it out a little bit. Uh, if there's technology involved in organized play, like an, a league, a web app based league system, right, which would be super cool. Um, they'll have to test it out. They'll have to do a bit of development. So, I get that they might not be able to say it now, um, but they are they are going to provide more information on that. They're saying, hey, it's coming. We're going to talk about organized play. We're going to talk about future releases. They've already committed to a Worlds event, um, but they can't just, they can't do it some, maybe not in the next couple of days. So I get it. Number nine, Ghost Galaxy is focused squarely on the existing player base and community, which has proven more than substantial enough for a successful game. So that's telling us that they're focused on the people already interested in Keyforge first to satisfy us, to get us a new product, because they know there's enough of us for a commercially viable game. They know they can sustain the company, sustain the game off of Keyforge that exists already at the very least for Winge of Exchange and, you know, hopefully another set or two. So we're their number one focus right now. That's what the game found is for. That's what their initial batch of efforts is for. Then lastly, of course, Ghost Galaxy hopes that our plans, future plans and releases are sufficiently fun and exciting enough for more retailers and new players to join in on the action. However, this is not among our first considerations. Serving the existing community and publishing great products are. They want to get the products published. They want to get it out there. They want to get their workflow down. They want to serve the people who already have their wallets open for this game, who are willing to spend some money on a couple wins of exchange or more uh, decks. And then... They're going to look at new players, getting more retailers and figuring out what that incentivizing program looks like. Um, and of course, their outro, except as provided above, Ghost Galaxy provides no other promise or guarantee explicitly or implicitly in regards to this campaign or regards to Keyforge in general. If you require more assurances, disclosures or guarantees than this, we cannot recommend that you back this campaign. Now, for context, if you do go through the Game Found comments, you will see a number of them from... Uh, emotional Keyforge fans asking for these kinds of guarantees. And that's really what this is in response to. I think this is good for uh, people like you and me uh, to know as well, but this is in response to those people. So in summary, really 
very little, if anything, in life is guaranteed. Personally, I hold a very small number of things guaranteed in my life and reality in general, but most things are not. Uh, I, <laughs> you know, every time I get in the car to go to work, uh, do I hope and intend to drive as safely, uh, as safely as possible to work, get there, have a productive day and return home safely? Yes, I do. And so far I've done that each and every day. That's not a guarantee though. That's not a guarantee. Um, nothing in life really is. And I think Christian T. Peterson and his staff are speaking from a place of experience, speaking from a place of already having taken on a lot of risk. And not that we give them a free pass for that, but just know that they've taken on a lot of risk with Key Forge. They're catching, they're trying to catch a falling knife. And I think they're going to do just fine. I think they're going to put forward their best effort. And I, I do hope and think, I do think they're going to succeed. I do think they're going to succeed, partly on the strength of Keyforge as a game, partly on the strength of their plans, their ingenuity, and partly on the strength, of course, listener, of you and me, the community of Keyforge, who love this game, want to play it with our friends, play it on TCO, <laughs> open new decks, find new things, discover new things, and I think that's great. So while this FAQ question is a bit of a timely one, it's just one part of the GameFound campaign to answer a couple emotional commenters, I think it is a really good picture into the very realistic but hardworking minds at Ghost Galaxy and what they're trying to accomplish. I'm hopeful. And here's the thing, right? We've heard it, we've said about a 500 times during this podcast episode now, there's no guarantee and here's the thing. That's right. There's not a guarantee COD's going to continue. I, Ed, and I hope and intend it to. There's not a guarantee Keyforge is going to be around for the next couple of years. We very much hope and we'll work as hard as we can for that, for that reality and to keep the thing going. But it might not. And here's the thing. The community is still great. And even if people disperse, there have been great things and many enjoyable things about Keyforge so far that we can treasure. It's like anything that ends, and that ending gives everything else in it value. Now I say that, I have no doom and gloom for Keyforge, right? Um, but I think when you hold Keyforge with an open hand, you hold it with a willingness that it might just be a part of your life for 3, 4, 10, 15, 20 years, maybe. <laughs> maybe longer. Uh, but even then, it's just going to be one part of your life, and it will technically be temporary. You know, I have an amazing, an amazing wife, Megan. She is the absolute, one of the best things that's ever happened to me. We might have kids, and maybe I'll have to, maybe I'll have to, you know, back off of Keyforge a bit when that happens. Maybe I'll have to really focus on a number of other things. Heck, I'm producing another, I'm pro getting paid to produce another podcast right now. I'm not backing off on Call of Discovery much. Uh, I've actually backed off of different things, not Keyforge. Um, but, like, there's just so much going on in life that can be good. And Keyforge is one of the good things in my life right now. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be one of the good things in my life for as long as I can make room for it. Not just as long as I think there's room, but as long as I can make room for Keyforge. And even if I get busier, I'm still going to have my decks. I'm still going to play whenever I can find the time to, because there's something special about this game to me. Maybe not to everybody. People want to build decks, and that's great. But there's something special about this game to me. There's something special about Bishop of Giant Way Kingdom, the Concrete Mother Chef of Free Keep, my first two decks. There's something special, oh my gosh, about the Rani of Bombagam, my third or fourth deck, and then the Raja of Bombagam, who I found in the, in the Czech Republic three years later. Anyways, uh, if you're a long-time listener, you've probably heard me get a little bit sappy before, maybe on three lessons. Uh, a lot of places to get sappy here in when Keyforge, when the future was grim, and now the future is, we hope, bright. There's a light, and it's getting brighter. And so all we can really do is go to bed tonight, wake up tomorrow, maybe buy an extra deck or two in the game found, wait for those next announcements, give some good feedback if we want some changes, give some praises if we think it's going well, live our lives as best we can, and make Keyforge a part of that. Because remember, there's always another human across from you when you're playing Keyforge, whether it's TCO in your real life. And that's the most important part of the game. <laughs>